Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think I've met some of you in clinic and some of you I might not have met. So I'm Kate Williamson, and I'm a senior clinical fellow, and you often meet fellows in clinic and think, well, what's a fellow? Because she looks like a female to me. But um, uh, in this sense, it means someone who's either towards the end of their training or finished their specialty training, but then is specialising or subspecialising in an area. So I've come over from Australia. I've finished my gastroenterology and hepatology training, but I'm staying here for further um, further training and to learn under Dr Chapman's supervision and especially learn a lot more about PSC. So I'm just now embarking on my PhD for the next three years which is in PSC and my mission is to try and learn more about the cause of PSC and particularly look at the immune causes and potentially also try um, an immune agent in PSC and do some of those early studies that Dr Chapman was saying haven't been being done, looking at how some immune drugs work. But I'm talking to you quickly today about trials at Oxford or in the Oxfordshire region and what, might, what opportunities there might be for you and, and what's involved for those who've never really looked into trials before. So why go into a trial? Um, I guess that it all sounds a bit daunting, especially if you're trying a drug that may have only been tried in 100 patients or so. When you get to phase three trials, generally that means that that drug has been trialled in several hundred patients, if not a thousand or so. And that's because the phase two is the safety trials. And so they make sure that it's been shown preliminarily to be safe in humans. So when you get to phase three, that's when they're really proving efficacy. They're still testing the safety, but they're, they're looking at the efficacy. So why go on a trial? First of all, you might be trialling something that no one else has ever trialled or very few people and you're getting an opportunity to trial a drug years before it's available and licensed to use because it generally takes about three to five years from a phase three trial if it's going to work. Second of all, you do get a team who then you get to know very well and some people see this as a benefit. So you get the investigator, the doctor that you're seeing would be the doctor that you're seeing each time plus Dr Chapman often and um, you don't wait for your appointment in clinic for ages. I know that, I mean, the liver clinic's not too bad at JR at the moment, but often you might wait half an hour, an hour, as you get your appointment at that time, and there's some leeway as to what time you get and that sort of thing. And then third of all, you're benefiting research, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a sec. So in terms of the forthcoming type of trials, I can't say exactly what trials we're going to be doing definitely here at Oxford until we've signed for them, but I think Dr Chapman's given some clues. Um, there's probably three big trials coming up that will probably be available here in Oxford over the next year and we'll be recruiting for, for those trials this year. Now some of those trials you have to come off your ursodeoxycholic acid and some of them you can stay on them. But for most of them, you, your ALP, that liver enzyme that goes up in PSC, needs to be up. So your ALP might be normal and you might think you're not eligible, but actually when you come off urso, your ALP can go up and so you can then become but, uh, become eligible. Now you might think that's a bit dangerous to come off your urso, um, especially with what Dr Chapman saying that we think it may have some benefit in some people, but these wouldn't be approved ethically to go ahead if we didn't feel it was safe to come off urso for the trial. And when we see you, if you are a potential candidate, we will assess your situation and decide whether or not it's safe as well for you. Coming off it, occasionally get a bit of itching and a bit of symptoms, but normally it's fairly straightforward. The ALP pops back up, you're eligible, you go in the trial. Um, so one of the trials uh, is probably going to involve a special bile acid, a different type of bile acid, a bit like Urso, but may have some other effects and it's a tablet. Um, and then there are some immune focused ones and often at the moment they're an infusion. So you need to have a cannula needle put in your arm and fluid go into the vein for a period of time. It might be 15 minutes, it might be an hour or two, um, but it, it's an infusion. And a lot of the new drugs, the immune drugs, because they're biological drugs, they're often antibodies that attack a protein, an inflammatory protein in your body. They need to be an infusion. But generally, the nurse is putting them in a very good and, and, it's, um, and you kind of get used to it after a while. But this is the way forward for most diseases that you're getting infusions now rather than tablets. So there's an immune, there's a, an immune one coming out soon, we think, that will be looking at um, blocking a particular pathway of the immune system to try and um, help PSC and help get the inflammation down. And then there's some anti-scarring, anti-fibrotic drugs coming out as well. And some of them are tablets and some of them are infusions. So uh, yeah, my subtitle, I don't know what happened to my subtitle. 
So um, I think Dr. Chapman mentioned about liver biopsy as well, and I just wanted to talk about that because often that might be a reason you think, well, I'm not going to do a trial if I have to have a liver biopsy. So many of you won't have had a liver biopsy before because you don't have to have a liver biopsy to diagnose PSC. We do liver biopsies when there's some uncertainty in the diagnosis or if we think it's overlapping with another condition. But generally, if you've got an abnormal MRI or ERCP that shows these bile duct changes, you don't have to have a liver biopsy. Um, now, liver biopsies aren't as all scary as what you think they are. Um, you lie down with your arm up, and it does sting when they, um, when they give you some local anaesthetic, but then you don't feel it after that. And the risks are quite small, um, and the trials would not be approved if we didn't think that it was ethically appropriate to do it. Now, in terms of why we need the liver biopsy, sometimes it's to establish a diagnosis, and sometimes it's also to see what the drug is doing to the liver. So before you take the drug and after, is the scarring going down? So one of the drugs, that um, the nor ursodeoxycholic acid, which is um, almost closed now actually, they did mice studies in that, a, a, a mouse that has a liver that's a bit like PSC, and they gave the mice this drug and you just saw all the scarring melt away. Whether or not that happens for humans remains to be seen, and we have to wait and see the results of that trial. So the other reason we'll be getting a liver biopsy, apart from just seeing if the treatment works and what happens, is to actually have a look inside the livers of people with PSC and what is going on in there that's making them have that disease. And that's what I'm doing over the next three years. So I'm looking around and finding opportunities of anyone who's ha with PSC who's happening to have a biopsy to get a bit of tissue from that biopsy and then I'm isolating immune cells out of those and bringing them to the lab and having a really close look at them. And I'm testing some hypotheses that are already thought about and there's some early re research on and trying to really pin down what the mechanism is of why people are getting inflammation and scarring in their liver. And then potentially, if we can pin that down on a, cert a certain type of cells, there are, there are therapies, there are targets, and we can target that, that cell. So my hope is that from the project that Dr Chapman's supervising me in, over the next three years, I can try and find out more about what the cause is and then find a therapy that can target that cause. So I'm looking at potentially asking people whether they may consider having a liver biopsy, a one-off biopsy. And that would be for me to get the cells, obviously, but what's in it for you apart from helping research? We're also looking at whether or not we can then um, have some scans and we can give you a, a diagnosis and an assessment of what, where your disease is at because you would have never had a biopsy to show how much scarring there is there because MRIs don't show how much scarring. So we'll be able to tell you how much scarring there is. And potentially, there is some new research which Dr Chapman's involved with that the biopsy may be involved in prognosis and telling you how things will evolve from here. So I think there will be some information you can get from a one-off liver biopsy, and that's just to watch this space at the moment. So in terms of how to get involved, um, I think that uh, we're looking at having a page, Oxford is, on the PSC support website to advertise what kind of trials and, and what we're doing and with contact numbers. Um, second of all, I don't normally give out my email address, but I feel pretty strongly about research in PSC and I'm happy for you to email me to ask me questions about the trials and I can put, point you in the right direction. You can always talk with Martine and PSC support because they can get in contact with me if you don't want to get in contact with me directly. Um, and also just that logo at the bottom, clinicaltrials.gov, will tell you about all the trials that are registered around the world. And so you'll see some trials going on in other countries and that sort of thing as well. So that's always a good one to look at and it gives you contact details of where those trials are going ahead. So I guess I just wanted to say hello and thank you for having me along and you know, so you know who I am. And tell you that it's pretty exciting right now because for the last 10 years I think there's been, there's only really been a ERSO and I think the other trials were much, much longer ago and suddenly there's a huge flurry of all these drugs ready to start in PSC which is really exciting. So hopefully, fingers crossed, within my lifetime I hope that we'll find a cure and... and uh, I know, I just, <laughs> maybe, maybe Dr Chapman's but hopefully within that. <laughs> Thanks very much.